finally getting ready to try this and these are a few of the items we'll be testing. First prototype is a uh, hexagon where the generators can mount which will bolt onto our, our adapter plate. Here are the uh, adjustable jets. I'm only going with a half inch feed here. Uh, I've seen a lot of people use really large PVC lines going straight to it. And I'll be also trying that going to two inch line right straight from the uh, water line to here to see if it actually makes a difference. The jets that I'm looking to install are about a quarter inch. The main feed in here is half inch and the actual main line coming out would be a two inch, reducing it to three quarters of an inch and then down to um, half inch. Here we have a Pelton wheel. Uh, it's supposed to be the most efficient design. They also have the Turbo, which uh, uh, we'll be trying out. I don't have that one yet. This is the bulkhead that's going to turn the two inch water line. This will come on here and go right into the, uh, our valve. I have a feed for the uh, main house, a drain to uh, clean it out, and then our three outputs for the hydro. This is a 3000 watt generator. So what rotates in here are the magnets along the um, along with the shaft. You see the coil rotating, but what's rotating is the shaft along with the, the magnets that uh, rotate around the coils. This is a 12 volt version. Ideally we want to go with a higher voltage which are more efficient. We want to start off with this one and test it out. This is the probably the cheapest way to go. Oh, we'll assemble this thing. We got our 20 inch by 20 inch adapter plate. Our first prototype. And we'll install the uh, mounts for the jets. Pushing. Flat washer. Black washer. And nut. Uh, They're all stainless steel. We got the peg side and the threaded side for the jets. This would be where we'll run the 18,000 jet. This allows us to be able to play around with the angle. Washer. These are lug nuts, so I won't be using a lock washer. We can uh, adjust it once we mount the uh, generator on here. Now let's uh, we'll bolt it to our base plate. this with grease in case any moisture gets in there it won't damage that spring on that seal try to center it and apply
really no need to solder up to crimp it on like that, but I think it makes it better. Before it cools up all the way, I'd like to clean up that flux from there. And we do the shrink tubing. Get our lighter. Here we made this little strap to hold the wires down so when this is spinning it doesn't rub against the wires right there. It's made out of a uh, 10 gauge solid copper wire. I drilled a couple of holes right here so I come out my rectifier. Uh, I could use some heat sink compound here to help it dissipate the heat. But this thing's rated for 150 amps and I doubt if I'll, I'll be seeing anything close to even 40. Key. I will lubricate this here. Put some grease in there. Try to keep it from binding up on me. Make sure that it's smooth and it doesn't get stuck in there. So when I go remove it next time, it won't be a battle. Yeah, it's pretty good there. And this one could go in either direction, but the best angle the jet straight is best to shoot in this direction here. Now we install the jets. This is the 18,000. 25,000 All right, it's all assembled and ready to try out. All we need to do is to calculate what kind of power we have available at the property. We will begin by measuring the length of our water line. It measured 120 feet from here, the intake, 
to where the valve is. There are 50 feet from here to where the two inch union is. Here is a transition where my water line switches from the three inch PVC to the two inch HDPE line. And from here it heads down to the house and that's exactly 3,000 feet. And then this last coupler switches from the HDPE to stainless steel. This last section is 9 feet long. The water marker we're spilling over is about 20 gallons per minute. According to this gauge, but most of it is coming out here on the side and underneath and on this side. All right, here are the results we got from our measurements. I started off with three inch PVC pipe and that's 120 feet to the main valve. From the main valve to our two inch transition is 50 feet. And from there, we have 3,000 feet of 2 inch HDPE line to the house, ending up with a 9 foot piece of stainless steel to our final 2 inch valve, giving us a total of 3,179 feet, which is just over half a mile, pretty long. To figure out my head height, I used Google Earth. At our intake, it showed that we were at 1,639 feet. And by the house is 1,456, even as an elevation of 183 feet, which is equal to 79 PSI. But our actual reading is 65 PSI. And converting that to feet, it shows that our elevation is actually 149.9 feet. So we stick for that since it's a lower value. Now we want to figure out how much water we can flow through that pipe. And for that, I went to these two sites. Here at the first one, this shows us that a two inch water line can flow 55 gallons per minute at low pressures under 20 PSI and up to 127 at higher pressures. The second side here, we can enter our parameters here. We have a two inch water line, it's plastic. Roughness coefficient, we'll leave it at the default. Pipe length is 3,179. And we're dropping 149.9 feet. This gives us a flow rate of 0.837 gallons per second, which turns to 50.22 gallons per minute. So this is comparable to the water flow that we have available at the property. Now with this information, we can approximate our power output. Going to this website here. Here, I downloaded their spreadsheet. And that was this one here. Now this one takes into account losses. So we'll enter our actual readings. Pipe diameter, two inches. Pipe length, 3,179. Elevation of 149.9 feet. Number of nozzles, we're using three. That's not really important. This is default here. We're leaving it at that efficiency. We can change this here to every five gallons per minute. And this shows us that we should be able to get at around 30 gallons per minute, 343 watts, which is what we got here. The other information that it shows us here is that our PSI will drop according to the flow rate, obviously. So 343 watts is the best, and the pressure should be around 37 PSI. If we increase the flow rate, you can see here that we actually lose power, and that's due to too much pressure drop. So we want to stick to keeping the pressure around 40 PSI. Now we'll cross check that with this other site and we can input our information here and this is in gallons per second. It doesn't have the option for gallons per minute. So we convert that over to gallons per second, which is 0.837. Drop down to 
drop is 149.9 feet. And the default here, they show a 40% efficiency. We'll stick with that. This shows us that we can get up to 566.7 watts. But this here is not taking into account the pipe length, which is what kills us. So according to the other website, we'll stick to the 30 gallons per minute. And 30 gallons per minute is actually 0.5 gallons per second. And that would give us 338 watts, which is still acceptable. Going a little further, we can try to calculate friction loss. For this, I went to this site here. I enter my flow rate, pipe size, pipe length, material, and that gave me a result of 25.2 PSI, the friction loss. Now using this second source here, same thing, enter all my parameters, winch pipe, pipe length, and flow rate of 30 gallons per minute, and that gives us a friction loss of 28.397 PSI. So we'll use this higher value for a comparison. So our resulting available PSI drops down to 36.603. This will convert to feet. So this is equal to a head height of 84.43. We use it to calculate our power here. Our flow rate would be the same, 30 gallons per minute. Head height is what we change here, which is equal to 84.43. And this gives us 190 watts of power at a 40% efficiency, which is really low. We'll do a little test here. See if I just spin this slowly, if we'll get any power out of this thing. Yeah, I guess we did. We we'll get a little power out of that. Let's see, spin it this way. Yeah, I can't spin it fast enough. <laughs> That's the first life that we see out of it. So we'll see how it turns out. You made it! <laughs> <laughs>